Tonight is November the 12th, 2021, and I'm going to show you tonight an AM transmitter I built. I'm very happy with, and I've uh, I've shown parts and pieces of this as I built it. But uh, tonight I'm going to show you a, um, a circuit I've added to the modulator. If you build an AM transmitter, which seems to have a resurgence nowadays, um, not sure why, but it just seems a lot of people are enjoying amplitude modulation, which means you have a carrier and you modulate it with a, uh, in this case, high level modulation. This is the modulator right here. It's a pair of uh, 4-125s and push-pull into this transform, this modulation transformer here, which is out of an old World War II BC-610 transmitter. It has its own power supply. It has a 2,000-volt, 700-milliamp transformer in the back, a choke. And over here is a, a transformer for the um, bias and screen supply for these, uh, for these two tetrodes. They have a uh, bias rectifier and a screen rectifier over here. Uh, this is a little 6X5 right here and a 5R4 for the screen supply. The bias runs around, I think, about minus 45 volts, and the uh, screen supply, I believe, is at 350. And the play voltage is right at 2000. That's just for the modulator. Um, there's a separate power supply. You can get over here without tripping. Down here in the bottom uses a pair of uh, uh, 872 mercury vapor rectifiers. are really beautiful when it's running. So this power supply here actually powers this RF amplifier right here, which is a pair of 812As in push-pull link coupled. You can see the link in there. And the two tubes are over here. 812s look exactly like an 811, but they're a low gain triode, low mu triode instead of uh, uh, the 811, which is a high mu triode. Uh, high mu triodes work really good in grounded grid. Low mu triodes work very good as like class B amplifiers and uh, they also work uh, quite well as Class C plate modulated amplifiers. And uh, here's the receiver, a vintage Collins 51S1. And the driver is an old Collins uh, 310B. It only puts out 15 watts, but it is exactly the right amount of power to drive this James Millen amplifier. Both of, them, both of these amplifiers, this amplifier right here, and this exciter right here are both made in 1947. Okay, so what the point of this um, video is, is that um, if you're going to run AM and you're going to build your own and you're going to uh, high level plate modulate it, you must be able to control the negative modulation so that you don't cut the carrier all the way off. I'm not going to try to go into any kind of full theoretical discussion of it because you can look all this up on the internet or in the old ARRL handbooks. But uh, <clears throat> I built a circuit right here that I found on the internet. Right here. I'll show you the schematic of it. And I just simply, if you follow this wire out, I just simply, I simply uh, sample the uh, the RF out of this port right here on this watt meter. The watt meter is not going to be displaying power in watts. I'm just uh, uh, sampling the RF out of it into the RF input port here. If you can see all that, it has an output of uh, demodulated output. You have to have audio on the y-axis of the scope and then you have to have RF output on the x-axis of the scope. Well, here's an interesting part about it. I'm, I'm all, all this is into a dummy load and I'm doing all this on the 20 meter band. Well, let me turn it on. I may have to turn one of these lights off here. 
Yeah, that might help. Okay. Now we're actually loaded up. And you can see me modulating it ever so slightly. Got to get that glare out. But let me get the microphone. I'll show you. If I modulate this thing, you can see that the uh, lines going from the uh, the focus out there, the apex of the uh, this trapezoid pattern, never goes to zero. And and I cannot make this uh, this circuit work properly. I, I can't make it go to zero. So anyway, what I did is I went back to the old-fashioned way. <clears throat> I'm going to show you here in just a second. Of actually sampling the, uh, our, the the audio directly off of the modulation transformer. A much much more uh, <laughs> serious and dangerous way to do it, but I have done it. And uh, again, the point of this is that I'm going to show you the circuit that I'm using. Okay, now I'm going to stop here and, and hook it back up to. Uh, the old-fashioned way, and, and, and I'll describe exactly how, how this is supposed to work and how it does work and, and how it gives actually a, a correct pattern, a trapezoid pattern. Okay, first of all, let's look at that uh, the circuit that I, that I was using to show you that trapezoid pattern. Here's where I'm sampling the RF right here, coming right out of that pickup out of the bird watt meter. Uh, you, you can find this on the internet if you uh, if you search for it. This is our RF output. As you can see, we're just taking the RF off of the uh, sampler, running it through a resistor and a potentiometer and a capacitor. So we're looking at RF directly. We're also taking a little bit of running it through a capacitor and into a couple of diodes. The original circuit shows this diode right here when it's anode connected directly to ground. Well, that worked exactly the same as what I was just showing you. So just recently I added this 1K resistor and thinking that if I raised the, uh, the negative clipping of it a little bit, it would uh, be better. But it doesn't seem to work quite right for me for some reason. And it goes to a diode, it's rectified, and then we have a little bit of a filter right here. And that's how we look at the uh, audio right here, the demodulated RF, which is uh, only the audio. We took the RF off of it right here with these diodes. Okay, now, since I couldn't get that to work quite right, I went back to the old-fashioned way of doing it. And uh, here's a schematic I've drawn of it. This, this you can find out of ARRL handbooks and off the internet, too. Is you have to hook this right here directly to the output of the modulation transformer, which is a dangerous place to, to tinker around with, but some way I can make it work. You run it through a, um, like a 500 picofarad, 10 kV pot, or excuse me, capacitor, and this right here consists of uh, 10 resistors in series. You want to you want to make this a long string of resistors. You don't dare put one resistor in there at, at these kind of voltage levels, or it's going to arc across it and blow everything up out here. And then a little 5K pot right here to uh, adjust for the Y-axis. So we're going to be actually seeing the same thing. But the way I do this is I put, uh, this one is used, I use 10 470K 3 watt resistors in series. And then I put all that in a piece of shrink tubing and, and, and shrink it down. I'll show you the, I'll show it to you in just a second. And then this goes out to the Y-axis. And when we do that, we actually get the kind of pattern that, uh, we're supposed to get. Now this is the circuit that I've built and I'm very pleased with it. I've tinkered with and toyed with quite a few of these circuits. This one was uh, I found on the internet by this good, this good gentleman right here and the article name is an improved diode negative peak clipper by Steve WA1QIX. If you search for that you will find this article. Well, here is the modulation transformer. That's that uh, big round transformer I described as a, out of a BC610. And it goes into these three diodes, a load resistor, a capacitor, and a, uh, a variable adjustment for what we call a keep alive voltage. Let's take a look at uh, what it actually consists of. Okay, now looking at all this circuitry from the side, 
This is that load resistor right here. This is the resistor that I use to adjust to what's called the keep alive voltage. You can also call it a bias. There's a resistor uh, set right there. These are uh, three diodes in series to make sure that I have enough PIV. There's another set of diodes here. This I think this one's called diode one, and this is two, and this is three, if I remember correctly. And I um, don't know if you can see it very well. But there's a string of resistors right here all in the series going from this point right here all the way around to here. That's those 10 470K 3 watt resistors in series, which gives me 4.7 meg. And right here's that 5K pot where I tap off of the wiper on it to give me just a little bit of drive for the, um, uh, for the Y axis of the scope so we can see the, uh, the trapezoid pattern. Now I've tried different types of uh, clippers here. One of them is a very simple uh, diode resistor that is reverse biased off uh, straight across the output transformer, the, the modulation transformer, secondary. The part that goes from the B plus and, and feeds the B plus and the modulation to the class C amplifier. And I just never was quite happy with that. Okay, up here is the uh, Keep Alive Voltage Power Supply. It's a vintage regulated uh, Lambda power supply. It's a beautiful thing. I just tell you, I just can't get over it. It's even got the serial numbered tube still in it. Let's let's look at it from the other side and I'll show you. Okay, from the other side of that uh, Lambda power supply, up here is a VR tube. Uh, I don't remember what this thing is. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's some little metal tube, 6 J7, whatever. A couple of 6Y6s. A series regulator and uh, what have you really interesting little thing works great I, it's variable from 200 volts to 325 and 100 milliamps and it's got a, uh, a 6.3 volt uh, winding on it too for filaments but anyway that's what provides what's coming right here on these two wires into this negative clipper circuit right here to provide the uh, what's called keep alive voltage. What the point of the keep alive voltage is, is to make sure that the plate voltage to the RF amplifier, this is the RF amplifier right here. These are the tubes inside. It's to make sure that during modulation, during the negative cycle of the audio, it never reduces the plate voltage to zero. Because if it does, then this amplifier quits conducting and shuts off. And when it shuts off and turns back on with the rest of the audio cycle, it causes uh, a lot of a lot of spurious sidebands we call splatter, and we don't want that. It's a, it's it's adjacent splatter. It's not harmonics. <clears throat> it's just uh, splatter right to the uh, to the sides, upper and lower sidebands of the AM transmitter. But let me show you what it looks like here on the um, as a trapezoid pattern when, when we measure it in this old-fashioned way. Uh, let me get it set up. Okay, this is what it looks like without modulation when I'm not talking. That vertical uh, display there, that vertical uh, deflection there is just the RF. And then when I start modulating it, you get the uh, trapezoid pattern. And what you want is you want nice straight lines. It's called the linearity of it. And you do get nice straight lines. Now, I have the keep alive voltage on. And there's a detail here that I, I hope I can I hope I can show you and, and make a point of. And that is no matter how loud I talk, right there on the left side, you see where that... Um, that triangle comes to a point. It never it never shuts off the carrier. And I'm speaking the way that I am intentionally. And there's certain words like four, four, four. You see, it never actually goes to a sharp point where the DC is shut off. The carrier is never shut off. You can add more positive modulation than 100%. But you can never add more negative modulation than 100% because more than 100% shuts it off. You, you might just, if, if you're really interested in AEM, you can do some of your own research. 
and find this out. But you will see four that the point uh, on the left side of the triangle never actually goes down to a a very fine thin line which would be zero. Now if I turn the uh, if I turn the keep alive voltage off, I, I should do that so you, you can see it. You, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Let, let me uh, uh, turn uh, turn the power supply off. Okay, I've turned the power supply off, and if you can see there, uh, the left side of it is actually shutting all the way off. That left that line on the left side is actually becoming zero. Uh, the, the vertical deflection of it is actually becoming zero. You can probably see it right here if the sink is good in little bright spots. I'm, I'm speaking very loud on purpose to, to intentionally overmodulate it. You can see some little bright spots uh, even just in this RF sampling. And that is overdriving it. That is adding more audio into the uh, high voltage power supply feeding the DC to the RF amplifier and it's actually shutting the DC completely off and that's not good we want to prevent that at all cost this is something that needs to be known about AM okay let me turn it back on okay to compare it again um, you, you can see that that left side still has some vertical deflection to it right there on the left side of that triangle. Again, I'm talking very loud, intentionally trying to overmodulate it. And if we look back up here, at just a simple RF sampling, we can see that it never goes to that little sharp, bright point of uh, overmodulation. I can see it. I hope the camera can. Uh, I know that sometimes there's a sync problem between the camera and the uh, and a modulation pattern like this, but actually this works. So <laughs> I, I know this seems like a, a minor detail, but it's not minor at all. It's actually very important that you never over modulate in a negative direction. Let, let me show you the schematic of it, of this circuit that uh, makes this possible. Okay, this is the circuit. This is the modulation transform. It's coming out. It's going through this one diode. You can see this one is forward biased and it's going straight up to the amplifier. So the DC coming right here, the B plus is going through this secondary of the transformer straight through the diode and up to the amplifier. So we got DC on it all the time. Now when you start modulating it, and this one is assuming this is zero volts, just for the we're going to draw a sine wave here, the positive side. It's going to go straight on through two. The negative side, see this diode is going to start conducting on the negative side and it's going to be somewhat attenuated through this resistor right here. This resistor right here is equal to the plate load resistance up here. And for an RF amplifier it's just simply R equals E over I. You can call it resistance, you can call it impedance, whatever you want. Uh, negative bias, the positive side right here goes right back through here got a capacitor and here's where our voltage comes in and it's adjustable. Uh, this is not actually necessary if this power supply is adjustable to uh, all the way down to zero but it's not. My power supply is uh, goes from 200 to 325 volts. That little lambda power supply I was, I was just showing you. So what I had to do is put in a, uh, a voltage divider resistor so I can pick off exactly what I want. Now, if you read this article, again, by this good gentleman right here, he will tell you that this, um, this voltage is coming in can be high impedance. It does not have to be regulated. It's, he doesn't seem to have uh, any issue with that. As a matter of fact, this capacitor right here is going to ground all of the uh, signal component right here. Not the DC, but the signal component is grounded. So it works. Now, there's a, there's a much simpler one that just puts a diode and a resistor in series from here straight across the transformer. And some people use that. I think it's kind of crude and I think it adds uh, a little bit too much distortion to it. Now, I'm not suggesting directly 
that if you have your heat kit Apache transmitter or DX100 or some of these vintage uh, EF Johnson Viking transmitters, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily put this in there. And if you read a lot about um, controlling modulation so that you don't over modulate again in the negative direction, then all of the fancy articles will tell you you should do all this back in the speech amplifier. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but that's a whole lot more complicated. A whole lot more complicated. And actually, I tried that. Here is the speech amplifier for exactly what you were listening to right there, uh, what you were seeing. This circuit right here is a 12AX7, a 6AL5, a 12AU7, and, and a couple of vintage 6B4Gs. And this circuit is built component for component correct out of the Collins KW1 transmitter. And it has a clipper level control right here, but I find it quite inadequate if you want to know the truth. I'm just not very happy with it at all. And that's why I went to the high level clipping. Now whether you choose to go to high level clipping or not, I don't know. It's a personal choice. But it seems to work quite well for me, and people tell me it sounds absolutely marvelous. There's just something very charming about an AM signal. Let me show you down here these uh, mercury vapor rectifiers. No, they're not on right now. Let's turn the transmitter on. Again, we're into a dummy load, so we're not we're not causing a lot of QRM. There's those uh, MV rectifiers. They're uh, 872s. 872, yeah, not a 572. I get them mixed up sometimes. Uh, there are a lot of, it's, it's quite an overkill for a, a, a transmitter of this size, but I think they are beautiful. And I think you can see the uh, the orange plates. Very nice, healthy orange on the 4 um, 125s. This camera tends to accentuate uh, the IR out of them. They're actually a, a very nice, uh, dull sort of an orange color. And up here in the uh, 812As, they show no color. They're not supposed to. Uh, this one in the front shows a little bit of very pretty blue in it. I love that blue color that uh, you start getting at uh, high voltage and, and again at higher frequencies. You don't see the blue as much in... Uh, on the inside of the tube. It seems to glow on the inside of the glass. You don't see it as much at uh, 80 and 40 meters, but you start seeing it at, at 20. And again, the receiver, so I have to uh, tune in somebody or whatever, decide what frequency I want to operate on. I have to zero beat this exciter with the frequency that I'm listening to. And it just seems to work very well. My output power is very steady at uh, 300 watts of carrier. And uh, yeah, you can see me modulating it just a little bit. I don't know if, I, th I think, yeah, you can see that. I want to show you something here too that's kind of interesting. When you fully modulate a carrier, you're actually putting out as much as four times the power at peak. And you can see it's uh, at peak, it's got 350 watts lit up, and you can see it actually flicking all the way up there to 1125. That first red light up there, 1125. Hello, one, two, three, four, you know. Well, the thing about it is, is, is if you use a clipper like this, you don't have to worry about shutting the carrier off if you get excited and talk too loud. And again, <clears throat> Like I say, it, it, it's actually quite a small appearing detail, but it's actually a very important detail. Is that the um, the left side of that uh, trapezoid pattern coming out never goes to zero. So the carrier never gets shut off because the voltage to the modulator is never actually reduced to zero. The example being, let's suppose we have, in this case, 1250 volts DC from this power supply down here, which is feeding this amplifier right here, and being modulated by this amplifier right here, this 
audio amplifier right here. If we have 1250 volts coming into here, then our modulator to modulate 12 to 100% has to go plus 1250 volts, which ends up with 2500 on this amplifier. That gives us 100% positive modulation. Now, as we talk, and the cycle goes negative, it's also going to go negative 120, uh, 1,250 volts. So when it goes negative 1,250 volts and this one's putting out 1,250 volts, we end up with zero. And that's where the carrier gets shut off and you don't want that to happen. You have to prevent that. So what does all of this mean? It means that, uh, again, there seems to be a, a wonderful resurgence in AM it's a whole lot of fun. Um, you can build your own. You can modify um, some of the ones that you can buy. I saw a beautiful um, EF Johnson uh, Viking 500. It's a 4-400 modulated with a pair of 811s. Just recently sell on eBay for a thousand bucks. I find that pretty reasonable, but uh, that's just me. And uh, there you go. So point of all of it is is just to uh, encourage those that want to operate AM and, and build their own or modify their own or whatever it takes to go for it and have a lot of fun. Uh, 73's and uh, stay safe. God bless.